Oh boy. Oh boy. I really stepped in it this time. Do you know what a cow pie is? Uh, it's not something you want for dessert. It's, uh, it's what comes out the backside of a cow. How about dogs? They got the same problem. It's doo-doo. Uh, doggy poo. Today, I'm reading Romans chapter 7. I call it the doo-doo chapter. Now, there's a lot of do's, a two-letter word, D-O, but I always view it as the double O. Paul is talking about trying to do something. Do, do, do. All the things he wants to do, he can't do. Cause he, and all the things he doesn't want to do, he does do. So I call it the do, do chapter. Romans chapter 7. Welcome to Nobody's Fault Podcast. My name is Cash. We're starting off talking about poo and do, do. Look out. Uh, the most dangerous people in society are those who are unaware of the potential for darkness hidden within their own heart. There was a lot there. I'm going to repeat that. This is really important. The most dangerous people in society are those who are unaware of the potential for darkness hidden within their own heart. What are you talking about, Cash? They are unaware of what they could do. Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Mao Zedong, They, they gave people who didn't know the evil lurking within them an opportunity to act on their hidden fleshly defect that we call original sin or the sin nature. These guys set up the conditions where people would discover things about themselves that they didn't know were there. A, a dark side. Um, let me tell you something. Baby humans are not born good. They're born with something that, that is called a sin nature. Uh, you have to train children to be good. It takes work. Uh, tonight, I just held a grandson in my arms. First time. He's two days old. He's an innocent little angel of a thing to look at right now. <laughs> but you got to look out. Babies grow up. They get bigger. They become two-year-olds, and then they become adults. How many of us entered high school or college planning to get drunk, high, and pregnant? Probably not a lot. How many of us plan on growing up to be angry, abusive, addicted, lazy, self-centered wretches? How many of us? How many of us start out in life trying to plan on that? Not very many, right? This is what Paul's going to explore today in this chapter. Romans chapter 7. So we seem to have a lot of people around us, like those people I just described. Angry, abusive, addicted. Uh, what's going wrong? Have you tried sharing a uh, political opinion in public lately? Uh, caution. It could get you fired. Or shunned. Or maybe laid out on a sidewalk or even shot at. That just happened a few days ago. Uh kind of shocked the world. Uh, what's happened? There are people calling for civil war these days. That's not good. That's not helpful. God does care about our actions, but way more than our actions, he cares about something deep inside of us, our heart, our spirit, the spiritual side of us. He cares about our actions. He cares more about what's really deep in us. The attitude of our heart. He desires in us a change of heart before we change our actions. We're always trying to hammer home the actions, the actions, the good, the good works and stuff. He wants a heart that's changed first. So your heart, your spiritual condition matters way more to God than anything you do. Uh, so at the same time, we're not off the hook for what we do do. So thus, the do-do chapter. Romans chapter 7. Let's get reading that. The do-do chapter. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only for as long as he lives. 
For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while you were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear the fruit of death, but now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me, for sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me, through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God and in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am! Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. That was Romans chapter 7. I don't think that you can read 7 without reading 8. Uh, unfortunately, the format I've picked, we're going to read 8 next, but if Seven goes with eight, because seven doesn't stop at a good place. So you got to keep reading. Keep reading eight. There's where our hope is. Uh, so the doo-doo chapter. Do you see the struggle he's talking about? Have you experienced that? What, um, what is in our heart? What is in our heart? Is that being transformed? Our heart could be transformed right now through the work of the Holy Spirit. But our physical body will not be fully transformed until we've gone from this earth and are in heaven with Jesus. We can't be completely physically transformed all at once. 
uh, we we can move in that direction. But Paul's laying out the case that there's going to be setbacks. We're going to step in the, the cow pie of the physical realm. And it's going to be messy sometimes. Um, our work needs to be in the spiritual nature. We need to work on the heart. Uh, we have a lot of people trying to be religious or, or trying to be good or, or trying to do these things in the flesh, but it's not from the heart. The Holy Spirit works on our heart. These things that we do that are helpful and good should be from a changed heart. Not, not some actions to get approval from other people for or to feel good about ourselves for. Uh, they need to be heart motivated from God. Uh, we don't need reformation of the body. We need transformation of the spirit. Th this is one of the things I think we're missing in our faith. Our motivations need to be transformed from the power of the flesh to the power of the spiritual. We can't be motivated with this thing up here between our ears. It's something deeper. You, you have a spiritual side, and, and we need to be come better at connecting with what that is and what it looks like. Um, sadly, the physical transformation won't be complete until we get our new body. we got to wait for that. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep making progress. This is what, what Paul's leading us into. Uh, Jesus gave us that path forward. Uh, to move from our fleshly flaws to our spiritual transformation of our heart. Uh, the doing we need to be focused on is in the spiritual realm. Uh, I, I almost think, I, now I haven't been through a 12-step program. I, I know a little bit about what they do, but I kind of think one of the main weaknesses may be that they're seeking to do an impossible task. They're seeking to reform the old person. The physical man. To their credit, they say, you're still a sinner, which is true. You're in the flesh, but we need to be transformed into a spiritual, a deeper spiritual being. We're, we're all spiritual beings, but we need to connect with that more and be led from the Holy Spirit side of the equation. Um, our heart needs to become more and more and more like Jesus. And that's when we start to get the fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, uh, the self-control. So we're stuck in a state of imperfection. And that's what's so hard to get our mind around sometimes. That's what Paul's trying to explain. The things I do, I don't want to do. And the things I want to do, I don't do. The do-do. Um, so while we're in the state of imperfection, Jesus covers all of our sin. But that is not a license to continue in sin. The sin that we say we can't change. Do you see Do you see how mentally this is hard to grasp sometimes? We should desire and hunger for a push towards the spiritual transformation uh, so we can become more and more and more like Jesus e each day. The, the, the term that I think best describes it is sanctification. It's a word you don't hear a lot in modern language. Um, the Holy Spirit is our personal spiritual trainer. We, we have a personal trainer, the Holy Spirit, the spiritual trainer. Too often we don't see results because we're working in the physical realm. We're trying to do things in our own power. Paul's just saying, you can't do it. You can't. You're not strong enough. We need something stronger. It, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Uh, an important thing about this, working with the Holy Spirit, is called relationship. Relationship. Relationship with God. How do you have that? What's that like? This is what we need to learn more about. Uh, this work is done with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of our denominations, at least the ones I'm familiar with, they don't understand this process, or if they do understand it, they don't preach it very much. Uh, too often, they deny it's even worth trying to pursue 
a course of sanctification, a, a, a course of becoming more Christ-like. It, it's not very well articulated, at least. Uh, if you haven't struggled with what Paul's describing here, uh, I, I kind of question, have you met Jesus yet? Um, a lot of people say, I'm a Christian. They do something, some mental thing, but the heart never changes. That's not enough. That's not enough. Jesus didn't call you to change your mind. If you can be talked into something easily, you can be talked right out of it. That's not enough. Your heart needs to be transformed. You need to surrender everything to God so he can remold you into the creature he designed you to be. And that's a spiritual creature. Um, if you call yourself a Christian, you're going to face this battle. You're going to face this battle. The, the battle between the, the physical and the spiritual world. So you need to go a lot deeper. And, and this is why I keep saying, I think we're reading the Bible from the wrong perspective. We're reading it to learn things, to fill our mind with things about God. No. God wants to talk to us. We need to read it to let God speak to us and to start to move us from the heart. Not from the mind, from the heart. Not from the physical, from the spiritual realm. Uh, Paul ended that with saying, Wretched man that I am, verse 24, who will set me free from the body of this death? And then he says, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then we continue on in chapter 8 and see what Paul's talking about. Thanks be to God. There is a way through this, but we've got to get our eyes on Jesus. We've got to get our ears tuned into the Holy Spirit. God has great things for us when we're aligned with Him, when we're following Him, when we're hungry for spiritual, for the spiritual food that comes from Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, don't step in any cow pies and uh, do, do the spiritual heavy lifting. Go bring glory to God today. I'll see you later. Bye. Let's push the right button. There.